Well, hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to today's Public Works webinar, Managing Winter Maintenance with GIS. My name is Brent Sherman, and I'm an account manager with Esri's local government team. And joining me on the session today is Ryan Selman. And Ryan is a solutions engineer with the local government team. Ryan, you want to say hello to everybody? Hello, everyone. Thanks, Ryan. So before we actually get going, just a few quick logistics that I want to cover. Um, on the right-hand side of your screen, you should have a go-to webinar toolbar. And uh, there you'll find a section for handouts where we've uploaded some uh, relevant materials uh, and content uh, for today that you're free to download. And also, uh, there is an area for questions. So please type in in any questions that you have for us uh, throughout the presentation. I'm uh, going to be monitoring this. And so at the, towards the end, we'll make sure that we have uh, time to, to go over all those questions. And then finally, just as a quick reminder, this will be recorded. And uh, the recording will be made available in about a week. So I'd also uh, like to invite you to join us for our next webinar in May where the topic will be developing a mobile strategy for public works operations. To register for uh, that future webcast or others, uh, you can, and as well as getting slides and additional resources for public works, you can go to go.esri.com forward slash PW dash webinars. So as we begin today, I want to just kind of start at a high level. Uh, and talking about GIS, because GIS is critical technology in making communities more efficient, more resilient, and transparent, and engaging. And smart communities know how to use this to improve processes across their operations. So historically, GIS has been mission critical for governments and the departments within those governments. And those who've understood the, the power of applying location and spatial thinking to Problems have found endless opportunities for GIS to improve nearly every aspect of their operations. And actually, there's been cost-benefit uh, analysis studies that have been done on this, and it really does show that, that the benefits are undeniable. One that uh, comes to mind is one that was done for King County, Washington, that estimates net benefits from GIS usage of up to $1.7 billion over an 18-year period. So that brings the question of why is GIS having such a big impact? And the answer is because it gives us information and context about our world. Everything in our communities has a location. All the infrastructure, the streets, homes, environmental factors, and businesses. GIS provides us with a framework for understanding our communities by bringing all these factors together and allowing us to visualize and analyze them. It uses location as that common thread to align all this information. So GIS allows us to see the interaction, the intersection of all these elements and discover patterns and relationships and even predict where things are going to happen in the future. So the simple answer is that communities are using GIS because it helps them make better decisions, enabling them to improve efficiencies, and reduce costs. But specifically to our topic today, the topic of snow fighting, spatial and real-time data will make the difference in how well you react to changes in the weather, how you communicate with your citizens, and how well you utilize your assets when fighting snow. To effectively manage a snow response effort, there's some things that are critical of importance. And one is that we enable every user, we empower them to discover and use and make and share maps. And that we can collect and organize and exchange that data and transform it into actionable information. And that we're able to get the information into and out of the field and disseminate that information so that people can get it where and when they need it the most. And it's also important that we're able to engage our constituents, our customers and get their feedback to help us make more informed decisions. Now, when we do this, when all this is brought together, there's a clear impact. One, 
you're going to see increases in efficiencies of coordinating your snowplow resources. It's hard to coordinate what you can't see. And the solutions we're going to show you today will allow you to see plows, to see calls for services, and other aspects of your snow operation in real time. You're also going to see increases in field staff productivity because the information is going into and out of the field in real time. With that, you'll also see decreases in the time it takes to close requests for service because real-time visualization provides us the ability to adjust resources based on priority and location and respond in a shorter amount of time to resolve issues. We'll also see dec decrease in calls for uh, to customer care. In many cases, we're going to know about the issues before a customer can even make us aware of them. And lastly, it's going to improve executive management's ability to effectively communicate. Now, we call this Snow Common Operational Picture, or SnowCop. It's a configuration of ArcGIS Online and the operations dashboard for ArcGIS that can be used to monitor snow event response, correlate citizen complaints, and current vehicle locations, and come up with a planned response to maximize our resources when responding to the event. The application uses GeoEvent Server to visualize real-time locations of vehicles and assets. It provides you with basically a jurisdiction-wide view of all of your snow response activities to ensure that performance standards are being met and that the resources are properly assigned to serve your community. So as you'll see and hear about today, this is a complete integrated solution that will enable your department to have complete visualization of your snow event response, including that citizen engagement component that I talked about earlier. Now, today the reality is we're all being asked to do more with less. And to do that, we have to be equipped with certain resources. This includes accurate authoritative information. It includes getting feedback in a timely manner and the ability to share that information with other people in the organization that need it, as well as the ability to access that information easily at any time on any device that we have on hand. SnowCop, the solution we're going to show you today, provides you with this ability for your snow event response plan. And this is done through the five apps that are part of SnowCop that we're going to show you today. Uh, I'll go through those real quickly. The first is the operations dashboard, which is the command center providing you visualization of the entire operation. There's the field assessment application that can be used by field supervisors and plowing operators to capture and display the status of your road networks. There's the yard maintenance application that's used by yard and field supervisors to capture and display uh, supply information in the supply depot or in the in the snow material depots. Uh, there's the customer care application. This is used by the customer service representatives to view and gain understanding of the snow related citizen requests that exist out there. And then finally there's the public information app. And that can be used by the public to view the plowing status of roads, to view road closures, and snow related uh, complaints and requests. Now, as we're talking about SnowCop, there's several distinct advantages to this solution that I want to go through with you. The first is that this is location platform technology. These apps are a configuration of ArcGIS Online that helps you solve the very real business challenge of responding to a snow emergency. It uses agile methodology and configurable deployment patterns that is used with all ArcGIS Online solutions. And it's part of your Ezra ecosystem. So this isn't a standalone solution. This is an extension of the current GIS solutions that you have in place within your organization. At its base, there's just the five ready-to-use apps that I mentioned previously. So this isn't a solution that's going to take you a long time to implement and where you're going to have to have extensive customization. And this also supports enterprise integration. So you're going to have the ability to integrate with enterprise solutions that you have in place 
uh, such as your, your AVL. So with that understanding, I want to take a look real quick at some specific benefits that some of our customers have seen, and then we'll move to the actual demo portion of the presentation. So by using GIS tools for snow truck routing, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation found potential savings of $1.5 to $2.5 million. That's a, that's a huge number. Madison County, Kentucky, they were able to completely transform and change the perception of their operations within the community. They have 22 snow uh, plow trucks. They cover 443 square miles. So in an operation that's that large, you can imagine that, you know, things do take time. And every time they had a snow event, their customer center was literally flooded with calls. People asking, you know, for, for information on when their streets were going to be cleared. And without the solutions in place to provide them with the visualization they needed, they really had no answer. So they implemented Snowcop to solve this issue for them. Now, interestingly enough, immediately after they implemented Snowcop, they had the worst snowstorm they had had in over a decade. They had over 18 inches of snow that fell. And despite such a huge, huge snow event, it was clear that the public perception had changed because people could now see via a map where the trucks were and the work that was going on. And the people that still did call in to complain, the customer service uh, representatives were able to give them realistic ups, updates that they could verify on the map. So citizens were able to use the map to go and plan their day, understanding when they were going to be able to get where they were going. And really and truly, that's usually what the citizen wants. And that's what we can provide them through this solution. In the city of Boston, by tracking their trucks in real time, uh, they can now alter the routes as new customer complaints come into their office. Uh, with their field mobility, they're able to push new routes and locations straight to the drivers in order to more effectively serve their, their community and do it in a more cost-effective and efficient way. The Iowa Department of Transportation, they created a track a plow live application. This has up-to-the-minute plow locations during the, so, the snow season that includes pictures to document the current road and weather conditions. They're using open data portal for citizens to access live traffic and road conditions. This provides the citizens with the information that they're looking for when there is a snow emergency. Prince George County, they were able to increase communications between their staff during a snow response, and they're now seeing faster response times as a result. The former process, they had inspectors that were out in the field that would drive around the districts and document snow conditions on a spreadsheet that they would then submit to the County Emergency Operations Center when they got back to the office. But now they're able to capture real-time snow condition information in the field and send that immediately back to that emergency operations center. This gives decision makers an accurate picture of the conditions so that they can target areas that need to be targeted. So with the utilization of ArcGIS Online, this provided them a spatial record of road conditions and it's enabling their staff the ability to quickly look up road conditions and respond to citizens' calls. And then lastly, I want to mention the uh, New York Department of Transportation is actually built on the solution and they're utilizing NOAA data services to uh, provide them a couple of different things. One is a 72-hour increment map for long-term planning and they also have a six-hour increment map for more accurate snowfall predictions. So these are really just a few of the powerful examples of how SnowCop is being implemented and built upon to transform the snow management operations across the country. So with that now, we're actually going to show you uh, these apps and demonstrate some of the ways that ArcGIS Online enables you to better manage assets and enhance citizen service for snow management. And so for that, I'm actually going to change things over to my colleague, Ryan Selman. Okay. Thanks, Brent. Um, I'm assuming you guys can 
see my screen. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks Brent. Um, uh, and what we want to do right now is kind of shift gears a little bit and sort of talk through um, some of the maps and apps that Brent um, articulated already in the in the first part of this presentation. Um, and like Brent mentioned, um, there are five maps and apps um, that we typically talk through for snow management. Snowcop is one of the, the, the operations dashboard that we talked about or that Brent talked about before. Um, that's one application. That's one part of this complete snow management sort of solution. Um, it's just one aspect of it. Um, so uh, we want to kind of run through uh, these five maps and apps and kind of talk through how they, how they work together, um, how they hit on operational um, goals, how they um, uh, hit on um, constituent engagement as well as public engagement. Um, so the first application that I wanted to talk through um, is this field assessor application. And this is really um, kind of the bread and butter application for your field assessment for staff, right? So um, this is that application that everybody is going to be um, working off of, um, whether you're out in the field actually doing plowing, maybe you're a manager out in, in the field um, directing uh, where the plow should be heading, um, or if you're back in the office actually um, telling folks where they need to be um, in a snow event, uh, this is that application that everybody can kind of work off of. Um, and it's a configuration of Web App Builder, um, which is great because it's uh, responsive in design. So if I pull this up on a phone or on an iPad, it's going to look just fine and behave appropriately. So what you're looking at here um, in the map is, um, in green, the complete road network for the city of Naperville. Now, as you can see in the legend here, no service is required for anything that is colored in green. Um, we're also seeing areas that need to be serviced right now. So this section up here um, in the northwest corner of the city needs to be serviced at the moment. We've got district boundaries as well as road barriers and road hazards indicating where issues are with the network. Um, also in this application, we're seeing snow complaints that are actually submitted by citizens um, via an application that Brent mentioned earlier that I'll get into in a second. Um, but we're seeing those, uh, those snow complaints actually come in live through this application. So again, it's all of this data kind of pushed into one app um, that staff can actually work off of and make decisions. Um, so if I poke at the map and actually select one of these service requests, I can see that this has been unassigned. Um, the description is a, it's a snow complaint. Um, Ryan Selman actually uh, poked at the map and actually put this complaint in there with uh, basic information about his phone number, um, email, and then that request date. Um, so the real heavy uh, part, not heavy part of this application, but really the power of this application is being able to edit off of all of this data in one app. And in this application, there is an editing widget where I can do that. Um, so if, for example, maybe one of these snow complaints actually was completed and taken care of, I could go in here and say that it had been completed and essentially adjust the status. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. What I'm really going to do is actually indicate to my plow um, or to my folks out in the field that there is actually an issue or maybe a street that actually needs to be plowed or serviced. And I can do that simply just by taking this editing widget and start digitizing a road. So I can see that there's an awful lot of, uh, I guess, snow complaints in this area. So maybe I want to um, just draw in using this editing widget the section of road that needs to be plowed. So now I've digitized my geometry. Um, I can indicate the plowing status, so maybe um, one. So this is just a, uh, uh, the plowing status is something that means something to the city of Naperville. Um, we're going to say that uh, the status of one means this is of high priority. Um, I could say the creation date is today, so April 18th. And then I can put my creator, um, which is Ryan Selman and hit close. So now I've indicated to everybody that's a part of this application who, have, who has access to the application that this is an area that we need to actually address because I've digitized um, uh, that, that uh, plowing requested area or that street segment. Um, so that's the field assessor application. Again, this is um, that, that one-stop shop for staff where they can actually uh, work off of the same data, edit data, um, and just kind of have the, their own internal um, operational picture um, of, of, of a snow management event. 
I'm going to move to another application now, and this is leveraging Collector for ArcGIS. Um, so Collector for ArcGIS is an application that comes um, with a platform uh, that, that many of you maybe have already utilized already. Um, but with Collector for, uh, for ArcGIS, this runs natively on, on, on devices. So iOS devices, Windows devices, and Android devices, um, you can leverage this application. And in this in this configuration of collector for ArcGIS, we're we're dealing with yard maintenance um, um, in in the snow management uh, sort of uh, um, operation. Um, so in this application, we see that we've got two yard um, yards or snow yards um, that we can see here. If I zoom in a little bit, um, you'll be able to see the north maintenance yard here indicated by this triangle. Um, so in the city of Naperville, they have just two yards. Maybe in your organization or your city, you've got more, maybe less. Um, but in this in this example, we're dealing with two. Um, so I have selected the north maintenance yard, so indicating, so I just poked at the map and selected north maintenance yard. Um, I can see that there's a salt capacity of 50 and a sand capacity of 50, and there's uh, 250 yards left of sand and then 125 yards uh, left of salt. So the idea behind this collector at configuration is that somebody out in the yard um, is going to have this running on their mobile device, and they're going to indicate to the rest of the staff um, how much uh, you know salt or sand is left um, for use in this in, in this snow event um, so what I can do with this application again because I've got the north maintenance yard already selected I can just edit it and let's say um, after you know a couple hours of plowing um, our sand quantity has stayed the same but maybe we dropped our salt quality to maybe 75 yards I can just simply key that in and hit submit and now anybody who has seen this in, in, in any of the other applications uh, sees that change in real time. So everybody is working off that same data and understanding what we have left to, to sort of operate with. Um, so again, a very simple collect, uh, conf, uh, configuration of collector for ArcGIS. Um, but again, this is this is for those those staff that are working out in the yards and um, kind of articulating to the rest of the of the team how much um, how much uh, salt and sand we actually have left. So now I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Um, the first two applications were more operational applications for staff. Um, this third application uh, I want to talk about is a configuration of our citizen problem reporter. And the way we've got this set up is it's, it's configured for winter problem reporting. Um, so this, the idea behind this application is that this is going to be for um, the public. Perhaps this is going to be on your uh, main website um, or made available to the public in some way. And it allows them to actually indicate where problems are throughout the community so, um, so the city can actually respond to those, to those issues. Um, so this is the basic splash screen that you're seeing right here. Um, I could sign in with, um, I could proceed as guest and submit anything anonymously, um, but I could also sign in with any of my uh, social media credentials. The way this is set up right now is I could sign in with an uh, RTS Online account or my Twitter uh, um, handle, um, but you could certainly set up like a Facebook uh, or uh, I think you can log in with your Gmail credentials as well. Um, so that basically ties identity to the points that you're actually going to be contributing to uh, with the problem reporter. So in this case, we're just going to log in as guests. Um, and I'm going to open this application up. And as it loads, um, we're going to see, because this is just configured for winter problem reporting, um, all I can edit are snow-related issues and road hazards. Um, so I'll actually click on snow-related issues for the moment. Um, and on the right-hand side here in this right pane, I can see um, any other issues that have been submitted by other citizens throughout the community. Um, so I can see there's several snow complaints that have been submitted already. If I wanted to see one of those, I can actually click on one. The map's going to pan to that point. I'm going to get some basic attributes about that issue to see if I also have the same issue so I don't actually have to uh, submit it if, if I do. Um, Again, like I mentioned before, if there are road hazards, um, because of the snow event, I could come into this application and actually submit a road hazard issue um, that may be impacting the rest of the network and the rest of the community. So really what I want to do right now is maybe it's been snowing like crazy at my house, and I want to indicate uh, that my, my, maybe my street needs to be plowed because it hasn't been in, a, in um, uh, quite some time. So I'll just zoom in on the map and say submit a report. And now I've got a pretty simple form that I can fill out, right? So I can say, uh, please, uh, 
plow my street ASAP. I can indicate my name, put my phone number, uh, email, and then request date. Um, and then the description is going to be snow complaint too. Um, we've got fields in here for building name and floor number. If perhaps you were in an apartment or um, uh, maybe, uh, you know, this is just a space where you could actually indicate um, uh, your building name for your apartment or maybe, um, you know, maybe the, the, the parking lot for that apartment complex needs to be plowed. So this is where that information can be filled out. And now I can just poke at the map to indicate where I want that request to be or that complaint actually to be located and then just click report. So I get an indication saying thank you, your report has been submitted and now I can move on with my day. Again, like the, the first application that I mentioned, this is built responsively. So if I pull this up on my uh, mobile device, which in most cases your citizens probably will, um, this is going to look just fine and behave exactly as it should. Um, so again, that's a, a configuration of the citizen problem reporter, um, just built for winter problems. The next application that I'm going to move on to is our fourth application, and this really is, um, in my opinion, the big hitter. So this is a configuration of Snowcop. Um, so this is that common operational picture that everybody in the management um, and really in the entire option operation has access to. Um, it's got all of the data sets that are coming in being edited from the field assessor application, from the yard maintenance collector configuration, and even the citizen problem reporter application. Everything is kind of funneling into this app. Um, so you have a common operational sort of snapshot of that snow management um, operation in a snow event. So there's several widgets that have been um, set up and configured um, in this snow cop configuration. And again, this is built on operations dashboard, which comes with the platform as well. Um, so just like collector for ArcGIS, if you got the platform, you, you know, this is just another application that you can leverage out of the box without any coding at all. On the left-hand side here, we see all of those widgets. There's several panes here um, that kind of hold those widgets. But the first one, this first pane is dealing with maintenance districts. Um, so we see in the city of Naperville um, that there are actually five districts um, shown. Um, underneath that, we're seeing district assignments for each district. So I can see who the responsible agency is, um, who the drivers are within that district, what kind of equipment is in, enabled in that district, and then, uh, you know, when this was last updated. And then plow activity down here in this final widget in this pane is indicating the expected ob observations for GPS activity compared to the actual observations of GPS activity. So if you had, like Brent mentioned earlier, if you had an uh, AVL system that you wanted to integrate into SnowCop and into your snow management system, um, this is a great way to actually understand what kind of activity um, is coming off of that AVL or that GPS, right? So we can indicate whether or not, you know, we're actually um, performing as we should in that district. The power behind the way these widgets are actually configured is if I click on one, it's going to zoom the map and then it's going to change all of the values here under district assignments and plow activity. So I can just kind of pan around and zoom and see how I'm doing, see how my, my operation is doing in each district. If I click on these uh, bar charts, I can see the actual observations. So this is GPS um, activity um, versus, again, that expected observation. So you can actually see values here. The next section of this um, is drilling into that maintenance yard application. So this is actually consuming live data from that collector configuration that we saw just a minute ago um, and putting it into this operational uh, dashboard. Um, so again, we, we mentioned before that there are two different maintenance yards, the North Maintenance Facility as well as the East Maintenance Facility. Um, if I click on one of these, it's going to pan right to that location, and then it's going to give me um, some indicators about how much we actually have left of each of, of sand and salt, right? Um, so we saw when I was editing before in the collector configuration, um, uh, the yard maintenance app, that data as that changes, that's going to reflect live in these widgets configured here in the, in the operations dashboard. So again, it's giving everybody in the, in the operation a good idea of what's actually left in each of those um, uh, maintenance yards as far as um, uh, sand and salt. If I go and pan over to the East Maintenance Facility, again, it's going to pan my map to that location and then adjust these values here in the available sand and available salt left for that East Maintenance Facility. 
Now I'll pan over here and um, now we see a list of all of the um, snow plows that are actually moving throughout um, the city of Naperville. Um, so Brent mentioned before, um, if you wanted to integrate your AVL um, or uh, had location of your plows, this is a really good way to sort of display where those plows are at at any given time. And oftentimes folks are using GeoEvent Server, again like Brent mentioned before, um, to essentially consume that AVL data and put it into ArcGIS so it can be consumed by this operations dashboard. Um, so if I zoom in and see, and I, I'm not sure if you guys caught that, but these these plows are actually moving live. So this is a simulator running in the background at the moment, but it's giving you an idea of actually, you know, what this would look like as these plows move around. So I can see right here with this blue dot, this is WT22, that's the truck name. Um, if I wanted to zoom into a specific truck, um, I could just click on that truck and it's going to zoom the, the map to exactly where that, uh, that location of that truck is. Um, if I had more than just, you know, eight or so here, I guess there's more than that, maybe 10 or so um, plows, I can filter this um, and actually search for a truck. So I could say, uh, let's search for vehicle number WS37 um, and just filter it down and then zoom right to that location. So again, just a really great way to understand where your assets are at throughout the community in a snow event, right? And then moving on um, uh, to the next sort of pane in this dashboard uh, is snow complaints. So uh, we saw the citizen problem reporter before um, and how citizens can actually indicate where um, issues are occurring related to winter maintenance. Um, so this is that information coming in live um, into the dashboard. So I can see who has submitted stuff. Um, I can see you know when that, that issue was actually submitted. I could sort these. I could filter uh, these complaints. I can click on this and it's going to zoom exactly to that. That location and show a little highlight of where that issue was um, so I can just get a better understanding of, of, of where these complaints are at um, and then finally here on the bottom we can see um, the number of so snow complaints that are still unassigned um, so this is 15 again as people actually drop in points into the citizen problem reporter this number would actually tick up so it's again it's a live feed of exactly you know everything that's coming through that citizen problem reporter and then finally, in the in the in the last pane here is just a basic legend showing you know what's actually being shown in this in this snow cop configuration. So that snow cop again built on operations dashboard. There's a lot going on in this application, but again, it's that common operational picture um, for your uh, snow management uh, for your snow operations in a snow event. The last application, and Brent alluded to this a little bit before, is a public-facing application that ideally could sit on your, um, perhaps your, your um, maybe your public works website or um, even your city's website or county's website. And the idea behind this one is that it's actually articulating to the to the um, to the public where you're at and what's going on in a snow event, right? So I can see any road hazards, uh, I can see road barriers, I can see any snow emergency routes. If I click on the map and I wanted to see more information about a roadblock, I can view that information so I can say, okay, there's a water main break here. Um, it's not fully closed and here's when the start date is and the end date. So I can get a better feel for, you know, what, what, what things are, or what's happening in my community and how, I, how can I get around town in, in a snow event, right? What's really interesting about this application is it's configured um, to consume social media uh, points. So here we see Flickr photos, Twitter feeds, and then YouTube videos all filtered by snow. Um, so anything that has been posted via one of those social media um, sort of outlets um, that has snow in it, I can see those on the map. Um, so if I click on one of these, uh, this is a Flickr photo. Again, this is just uh, cons you know consuming that Flickr feed. It's showing a picture, and um, you know obviously this is you know snow related, so it's showing up on my map here. So you can get a feel for um, kind of the local sentiment of of what's going on in a in a snow event, um, all just via via social social media feeds. Um, so again, this is a configuration of our public information uh, template. Um, uh, comes with with the platform, and again, this is just really powerful to kind of articulate how things are are going in a snow event, and 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 where you know certain road hazards are, or roadblocks, or anything of the sort are at, um, as well as snow snow emergency routes uh, too.
So those are the five applications. Again, these are baseline applications to sort of get you guys um, kind of moving in the right direction and to jumpstart your snow management um, operations. And one thing you might actually be considering right now or, or thinking about is like, well, how do I get started with all these apps? I mean, these are, you know, there's there's five apps. They're, they're out of the box. They're commercial off the shelf uh, applications, but still, how do I get, how do I get started? Um, and I think I'll turn it over to Brent and he can kind of talk through that a little bit um, more. So let me stop showing my screen. All right. So yeah, Ryan, th that is, that's the next question that we have is, is so how do you get started? Well, what are the next steps? So let's walk through that real quickly. So the next step is simply that the RGIS platform is, as Ryan was, was talking about, uh, this includes a continually expanding list of configurable public works workflows. And these workflows include most of the common tasks that public works departments need GIS and, and mapping to optimally perform, in, including Snowcop. And so these are all part of the core ArcGIS platform that are freely available and supported through standard technical support and are part of regular platform upgrade cycles. And you can find this at solutions dot rtis dot com that's at the bottom of your screen right now that's solutions dot rtis dot com <clears throat> once you get to the solutions page uh, you can navigate down to the public works section and in that section you can access all the entire full suite of public works solutions including snowcop that, that we've shown you here today um, with that I'd also like to mention that uh, if there's a need uh, and, and you need assistance setting this up and standing this up, um, definitely let us know because we do have a service offering that we can put in place to help you put uh, Snowcop in place for your operations. And so with that, what I want to do uh, is, is kind of open this up and uh, start you know, answering any questions that, that you may have. Uh, so if there's any questions, I didn't see any, and, and I hope I'm, I'm not missing this just because uh, I'm looking in the wrong place, but I didn't see any questions coming in during the presentation, uh, but certainly feel free to enter those or, or, or call those out to us right now. While we're looking, if, if some people are coming in with some questions here, uh, let's see. <clears throat> um, some questions, you know, kind of to get us, get us started on this. Um, one question that, uh, there's a couple questions that we, we tend to hear when, uh, when Ryan or, and I are out in the field. Um, and, and one of those, and, and we'll even expand on it a little bit, is he was talking about the citizen problem reporter. And uh, one question that we get is, is, you know, can this citizen problem reporter be used for other things other than just snow? And uh, the answer is, is absolutely. And Ryan, if you want to expand on that a little bit, I'll certainly let you, you know, dive in here and, and, and answer that as well. Yeah, no, thanks, Brent. Um, uh, that is actually a really good question. We hear it often. Um, the, what you saw today um, was a citizen problem reporter obviously configured just for winter uh, issues, right? So road hazards in a snow event and obviously snow complaints. So please plow my street, stuff like that. Um, but it can be a bigger sort of um, almost like a front end to a 311 um, problem reporting application, right? So you could have animal complaints. You could have blight complaints. You could have um, maybe uh, road network complaints such as potholes. All of those different things can all be confi uh, configured into that citizen problem reporter um, and sort of added to uh, the winter issues that um, citizens or that that we we saw today in that configuration of the application so yeah absolutely you can have have it kind of as your uh, big front end sort of problem reporter application but it can still feed into the snow related um, applications that we saw the other f uh, four apps uh, that we saw so yeah yeah it can it can be whatever you want it honestly Right. And Ryan, I know another question we get um, too that, that I wanted you to kind of address is uh, that field assessor app. Um, a lot of times we get a question, you were talking about, you know, drawing in um, uh, the area. If, if they select, is, is it possible for them to select on one segment and, and change the value? That's a question we hear a lot as well. 
Yep, another really good question. Um, so the answer is yes. The way we configured uh, the field assessor application um, in, in, in this instance was that you could actually draw in and digitize where plowing need to, needs to actually occur. occur. Um, but you could uh, certainly have your road network in there, and they, if they were broken up at, in uh, sort of street segments, you could uh, select one of those segments and actually flip a value and say, okay, this needs to be addressed or it's already been addressed. Um, you can certainly edit uh, in that way. Um, it's just however your however your street segments are, are, are or how your however your road data is sort of um, stored um, you know you can you can definitely support that kind of workflow absolutely yep awesome thanks Ryan you know one thing I, I'd like to mention too um, is is the multi-utility uh, of, of this uh, set of applications uh, you know obviously when when we have snow and and we're plowing and putting down salt and sand and different things like that, uh, you, you know, it can make a mess of our streets. And actually, uh, this can be repurposed to use for your street sweeping efforts as well. So that's something I wanted to point out. So Daniel asks, uh, are there Snowcop users that consume AVL on their public-facing apps? So Ryan, uh, do you want to... Um, I I think I I have seen that um, before. Yeah. So what 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 the question is? Uh, so be, being able to consume an AVL feed through GeoEvent Server, I I presume, um, and actually pushing that into a public facing application. Um, I mean, it's I I don't know if I have actually, an example of a customer. Oops, sorry. Go ahead. I I would the Iowa application actually does do that. Um, okay. That they are putting that out as as a you know for their public facing so that uh, because along with the uh, visualizing where the trucks actually are in the field, uh, they actually also put out a um, you can get a camera feed uh, to to see what the road conditions are in in that area specifically as well as you know kind of get a view of of. Uh, what the uh, what the weather is? Yeah, that's a good question, though. Yeah, I was going to say it's te certainly yeah. technically possible, but I just didn't know if anybody offhand, off off the top of my head, that has actually uh, had it. So I, that's a great example. Yeah, thanks, Brent. Sure. Are there any other questions? It's a great question. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I do want to be sensitive to everybody's time. Uh, certainly at, at the end. Uh, you'll see uh, my email address as well as Ryan's email address. Definitely feel free to reach out and contact us at any time or talk to your specific account manager. So um, at this point, what I'll do is I'll kind of go on and, and move. If you still have questions, definitely feel free to keep typing those in uh, because we do have some time and we can go ahead and continue to answer those. Uh, but I want to kind of point out a few things as we, we near the end of our time together. So uh, I wanted to mention our Public Works community. So in addition to the solutions site that I talked about a little bit ago at uh, solutions.rjis.com, uh, Esri also maintains a public works industry page that has up-to-date user success stories, uh, white papers, as well as special offers. And that is at esri.com forward slash industries forward slash public dash works. So I certainly invite you to uh, go out there and, and join that as well. And then I'd also like to make you aware of the Public Works Meetup site, which is a social gathering uh, to discuss and demonstrate geospatial technologies in the Public Works space. And the, the uh, web address for that is at the bottom of the screen right now. And that's meetup.com forward slash Esri dash public dash works dash meetup. And then I'd also uh, like to mention that Esri will, will be attending two upcoming APWA events. Uh, the first is the North American Snow Conference, uh, which actually starts this upcoming weekend. So it's April 23rd through the 26th. That will be in Des Moines, Iowa. And uh, I want to point out that I actually will be at that conference and will be presenting the Snow Cop Solution on Sunday afternoon at 1.30, so I certainly invite you to come by and, and see that presentation, and also come by the booth and, and visit with me. I'd love to, to visit with you more about uh, your operations and Snow Cop and, and um, how we can help you put that in place for the next snow season. 
And then also we'll be at PWX this summer in Orlando. And so again, uh, Esri staff will be at both of these events and certainly encourage you and, and your colleagues to come by and visit with us and see the latest things that are available for the public works community. So following uh, the webinar today, you're going to receive a quick survey to provide us with your feedback. And we're going to use this feedback to help us uh, guide and plan future events in this, uh, in this public works series. And so uh, definitely want to thank you again for your time today. I, I hope you found this useful and valuable. And certainly, as I mentioned a minute ago, uh, my email address, as well as Ryan's, is at the bottom of your screen right now. Feel free to reach out to one or, or both of us uh, if you have any questions that, that maybe come up after this presentation, uh, and we'll be happy to, to answer those for you. Uh, and we certainly look forward to talking with you further and helping you implement SnowCop for the upcoming snow season. Thanks so much.